Okay, Chairman Dino Jalal, let's get right to it. Uh, it was a very wonderful session that you moderated this morning. Uh, very insightful, substantive. We learned a lot about China-ASEAN interactions. In that uh, presentation, you brilliantly coined a few words. You said China-ASEAN relations are currently underappreciated, it's underrepresented, so on and so forth. Can you elaborate uh, what you mean? The reason why the relationship between ASEAN and China uh, is, is unique and special uh, is because both sides had been underrated, underestimated, and underappreciated. Many who thought that ASEAN would be doomed to failure as a regional organization many times over, you know, in, in 70s, 80s, 90s, and, and, and so on. But we proved them wrong because uh, ASEAN had grown from 5 to 6 to 10 and soon to be 11 and had become a very coherent organization that is in control of our region. And China too, China stayed the course. China kept growing steadily based on its own model. So, you know, I think President Xi Jinping's uh, comment that uh, every country must be able to choose their own development model is something that resonates well uh, with uh, you know, countries in the global south, including in, in many in Southeast Asia. You think China has walked the walk when they repeatedly trying to send this message to the world out there that um, it's not interfering, it's respecting uh, diversity and people's own models of development that suits their own national conditions? I think it, that's a very important uh, point, Guan, because uh, look, uh, the reason why this works, the relationship, is that when Southeast Asian countries deal with China, we don't think like this, we, don't, uh, we gotta change China. And when China deals with us, you don't think, oh, we gotta change them, right? We gotta change that country, no, no, right? It's a relationship based on uh, goodwill, right? And non-interference and mutual respect, right? These words among us are not just words. They're actually code words, right? Like, for example, why uh, is mutual respect always being said by China and by ASEAN, right? Because there are so many episodes where China deals with you know, other parts of the world where China is not listened to. So based on that, you value the term mutual respect more. And it has a special meaning to you. Same thing with us. You know, we've been bullied, we've been you know, interfered, uh, and so on. So the, the terms mutual respect, non-interference has a, a special meaning uh, to us. And this is why the relationship works because we understand uh, one another. Yeah. You talk about the fact that uh, some states treated ASEAN as a, a regional bloc that couldn't make big decisions, like you said, and uh, they think um, um, the bloc is it's soft. The reality is, uh, look, ASEAN doesn't need to be EU, it doesn't need to be any other organization, it just needs to be ASEAN. This is why we call ASEAN way. We know what works for us, right? Uh, and we know how to fix things among us, right? Uh, for example, you know, Indonesia and Malaysia, we used to have a confrontasi. We used to want to destroy Malaysia. This is in the 60s, right? Indonesia and Timor-Leste. Uh, East Timor. Yeah. We, we used to have very bad relations after breakup. Indonesia and Singapore also had yeah. very th bad relations and so on. So you look across Southeast Asia, many countries in the region had adversarial or conflictual relations with uh, one another, but we fixed that, right? Uh, we fixed that in our own way, right? Even Vietnam did not want to join ASEAN because Vietnam was suspicious that ASEAN was a tool of Western countries, according to them at the time. But we showed Vietnam, no, we're not. You know, come join us, and you'll see, right? And Vietnam joined uh, ASEAN. So uh, ASEAN does not perform like any other regional organizations. And it should not be that way anyways. And this is the re reason why ASEAN has grown, in my view, quite solid. Uh, still with, that, with challenges, obviously, you know. Uh, but uh, ASEAN, I think, uh, is quite successful as a regional organization. Yeah. Chairman Jalal, I wanted to ask you about uh, the cohesiveness of ASEAN. Because if you think about it, it spans a great uh, land mass, not just land mass, but uh, incongruously. Uh, stretching to the Pacific Ocean, you have Buddhism, um, you know, uh, Christianity and uh, Muslim population a big time, and also there are different uh, ethnicities here, islanders to I think Chinese, Malay, Indians. How come it has remained relatively calm and non-violent 
and peaceful if you compare uh, what it is in this region versus the Middle East and uh, Eurasia. Southeast Asia was quite divided in the 60s and 70s. There was the Vietnam War, there was Cambodian War. There was a lot of violence, a lot of conflicts between and within uh, nations in Southeast Asia. But I think we've benefited from good leadership, uh, statesmanship uh, from countries in the region. Yeah? Um, they began to craft regionalism, right? And they produced the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation, which means any country that wants to play in our region, they have to sign on um, to it. And they were very pragmatic. Uh, they know if there's a dispute or conflict they can't deal with, then they take their time. Right? But those that uh, they can uh, fix, then they fix. You know, the Malaysia, Philippine understanding on Sabah, uh, which is cloned, claimed by both, for example. So there is uh, the spirit of pragmatism uh, and dialogue. You ask any ASEAN governments, their first prefer preference is always, you have, we have a problem? Okay, let's talk, right? Let's talk. Uh, one example of example, uh, uh, this is a good example. In the South China Sea, is the only one of major conflicts where both sides are actually talking and sitting on a table. Uh, in uh, Ukraine, Russia and Ukraine are not talking, right? In the Middle East, Israel and Palestine uh, are not talking, right? In, North, uh, in the Korean Peninsula, the North and the South are not talking, right? Uh, but in the South China Sea, both sides uh, of, the, of the disputes are actually, have been talking to formulate the code of conduct uh, in the South China Sea. And that's, uh, you know, it's a good sign. I hope they can wrap up their, their, their work soon, right? On the code of conduct, which has been in the making for many years. Yes. So. Mr. President, you also talk about uh, four Ds. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, was, that was a great way to put it. Yes. Can you elaborate to our viewers? Yes, uh, I referred that uh, ASEAN and China, as they chart their future relations, must have four D. One is depth, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the relationship cannot be at the elite level. It has to go down to the grassroots. Uh, it has to be uh, a dense, um, meaning it has to be rich in content, right? and then it has to be uh, durable. That means it has to be resilient. It cannot, there's gonna be a lot of shocks in the relationship, uh, be among us or f externally, right? And both sides have to have the quality of relationship and trust that can withstand all these uh, 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 shocks and jolts to the relationship, which will happen at some point. Uh, and it has to be dearly, which means it must have soul, it cannot be transactional, it must capture the heart of the political establishment as well as the, the, the public. Right? And I think if we have those four, uh, we will be in, in good, good shape in the future. Yeah. On that uh, happy note, uh, Dear Lee, Building Dear Lee Relations, thank you very much. Uh, Chairman Jalal, thank you for your time and your insights. Thank you, Gwen.